talked about it before, the death of Sega. Sad, sad times. Sure, we can all reminisce of classic games of old for Sega systems and how nowadays, well, they're all crap. However, when you look at it, every so often they do tend to give us a glimpse of pure awesome, something that takes us back to the days of old. I want to apologise to all my long-time watchers. I've not shut up about this upsetting time in my uh, uh, Sega's life. And yet again, I'm going to mention that that time when I turned on a Sonic game on my GameCube and saw that Nintendo logo. It was obviously going to happen, but I remember being in that room with all my Nintendo fanboy mates and they all in unison looked at me and went, Ooh, that's got to hurt. And you know what? It did. But now I had officially and sadly moved over to the dark side and bought a GameCube. It wasn't long before I saw a small glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. Super Monkey Ball. The game was Sega's first attempt at the GameCube, a launch game for the system. Sega, this is your chance to win back a little bit of that respect and show these Nintendo and eventually everyone else that you're a force to be reckoned with. You can do it! Guys, this is Super Monkey Ball, the second game in the series. As usual on Slopes Game Room, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So, it's best to start at the beginning. Amusement Vision, one of Sega's studios, primarily focused on dealing with Sega arcade games. Only really around for four years until the studio went defunct, these guys made some absolute corkers. Not only do you have Monkey Ball, but you've also got Virtual Striker, F-Zero AX and Ollie King, and that's just in the arcades. You've got Daytona USA 2001 for the Dreamcast, and games like Monkey Ball 1 and 2, and of course F-Zero GX for the GameCube. Which is the best F-Zero game ever made. The team was headed by swoon sensation Toshihiro Nagoshi, already catching Sega's hearts as the creator of the previously mentioned Daytona USA and Virtual Striker. Now you may notice that this video is called the complete history of Monkey Ball rather than Super Monkey Ball. Well that's because before this game you had this game, released in 1999. Now Toshihiro came up with the idea after making uh, realistic simulators and wanted something that was instantly easy to pick up and play. After all this is an arcade game and the team didn't want any instructions after the coin was dropped in and they started touring around with the idea of a ball in a maze. But let's be honest here, Daniel. Playing as a ball in gaming really isn't anything new. It's a gimmick that's been going back years, thus making Monkey Ball no more than a Tesco value imitation of Marble Madness. Ah, uh, Top Hat Gaming, how right you are. Marble Madness, although from what I can tell never a officially confirmed, surely did have a hand in inspiring Monkey Ball. However, not only is the game played in a very different sort of third person perspective, but what you may not know is that in Monkey Ball you're not controlling the ball at all, and instead you are actually tilting the entire world. In other words, when you push up in Marble Madness, you're moving your balls, <laughs> sorry, marbles up. However, push up in Monkey Ball and the whole world tilts forward, giving you the illusion of simply moving forward. <laughs> okay, I slightly retract my point. Even the finest gentlemen on the planet, such as myself, sometimes make mistakes. I grant you full permission to carry on with your scheduled programming. Cheerio! Yeah, let's move on. Early concepts of the game didn't include monkeys at all. In fact, early concepts involved just a plain ball and eventually a ball with a sticker on it to help. But thankfully, this boring design was quickly improved on due to playtesters having issues controlling the direction of the balls. Plus, it wasn't very appealing. 
Well, after toying around with a few ideas, eventually they added a character in the ball. There you have it. AA, Mimi, Baby were born. It looks like the whole thing just, well, fell into place. Monkey Ball was born in the arcades and attracted passers-by at the 2001 Amusement Operator Union trade show sporting a beautiful display and more importantly, a banana-shaped joystick. Oh yeah, did I not mention that bananas in this game are all Dole endorsed? All of this combines to make an extremely unique and gorgeous looking thanks to the Sega Naomi board game. Which is yet again great news, as the hardware inside the Dreamcast was made specifically to be able to port Naomi arcade games quickly and easily. So this is it. Monkey Ball was seriously picking up attention and everything in the world of Sega was just plain dandy. Well not exactly. As I already mentioned previously, this was the year that Sega consoles went bye bye. And well, this brings us back to Sega's big first release on the GameCube, Super Monkey Ball. So let's continue where we left off. Come on Sega, this is your chance. Show us Sega fans that you can do it. And you know what? They did. Super Monkey Ball was considered by many to be the GameCube's best launch title. Sure has not stood the test of time in that regard when compared to games like Smash Brothers and perhaps Luigi's Mansion, but still, what an amazing feat for the early days of Sega as a software house. I guess all that we really need to do now is to take a look at that GameCube game, Super Monkey Ball. Do I even need to say it? I love this game, this series, and as this was the first game I played in the series, well, it's safe to say that it left a lasting impression on me. The game is simply, you tilt the world and roll your monkey ball into the goal. Sometimes you have obstacles that bounce you back, sometimes you find yourself going uphill, so you require a fairly big run up. You can fall off the edge, find shortcuts, collect bananas, zoom down ramps, yet, the game is seriously simple to understand and even get past the first several stages. But before you know it, the game's difficulty ramps up and you find yourself getting seriously frustrated, in a good way. The perfect blend of one more try, one more try, and every time you hear continue, you know that deep down you're getting better. The game is addictive as hell. However, looking back and playing through the game for the first time in many, many years, you can't help but think, damn, it's pretty short. Thankfully, constantly trying to beat your own score is really what keeps you going. That and the mini games. One thing this game has over its arcade predecessor is those mini games. I actually probably played these more than the main game itself and had some crazy addictive fun whilst doing so. Remember how everyone and their mum used to play Wii Sports games? Well, this game reminds me of the fun I had with those, but with no motion controls and as a solid extra to an already great game. Now if I was going to cover each mini game in this entire Monkey Ball series, well, we'd be here forever, because in total there are 129 mini games based on this entire franchise so far. The first game had six mini games, three of which you had to unlock. You got Monkey Race, simple enough, you race each other. Monkey Fight, that typical Mario Party S mini game that shows up in all party games where you're on a small ledge and you gotta knock each other off it. Monkey Target, one of the absolute best in the game, hands down. Man, I've pumped so many hours into this. Fairly hard to control at first, but get used to the correct time to open up your chute, work out the wind, know when to pull up or dive, and you have one crazy addictive game here. And then you got three unlockable games, Monkey Billiards, Monkey Bowling, and Monkey Golf. All very obvious and all play exactly how you want them. In a nutshell, Super Monkey Ball is a great little package. 
thankfully all us GameCube owners didn't have to wait too long as only one year later we got Super Monkey Ball 2. We wanted more and we got more. More stages, more mini games, uh, a story mode? Yeah it's pretty throwaway story wise but it's still good fun to play those stages. Plus I suppose it's quite funny finding out that the villain in these games is Dr. Bad Boon who's apparently after everyone's bananas. If you get a chance, pick this one up. Super Monkey Ball 2 not only has more main levels to stick your teeth into and really test your skills, but also it has double the amount of minigames. The very same year Sega put out Super Monkey Ball Jr. for the Game Boy Advance, which yet again got loads of great reviews, and in some cases near perfect with IGN even giving the game a solid 9 out of 10. Just look at this. Super Monkey Ball isn't exactly a new concept, as its main game is honestly just a 3D version of Marble Madness. No, 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 it's not. Now if you was one of those 13 people in the world that had an engage, then you could even get Monkey Ball on that. It was a port of the Game Boy Advance game, however they just went with the simple title Super Monkey Ball with this one. It's obviously just a stripped down version, choppier controls and no multiplayer. Still pretty good for the system I suppose? Uh, get this one if you collect for the engage, otherwise play any of the games I've already mentioned. Ok so what next? Well you got a small little cameo in Sega Superstars, uh, it is what it is. Fancy great gameplay hindered by crazy awkward controls? There you go. Man, I've been talking about this game a lot recently. Let's move on. Here we go, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. The first time this series made its way onto the original Xbox and the first time it was properly ported to the PlayStation 2. Now don't get too excited, it's sort of a best of game. The first game had 114 levels, the second game had 149 levels. Put them together and add an extra 47 levels and you have 310 levels of pure monkey ball awesome all on one disc. Ok, that is actually pretty good. Nothing much else to say here except that it plays exactly how you want it to and well, it's dirt cheap. Probably the ultimate must have version of the game. Another year passes and another 3 games are released. Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll for the Nintendo DS, other than a slight change in art style, which I do not prefer by the way, it's really yet again more of the same. However you do get the option to use the touch screen to roll the ball, thankfully you can swap the controls back to the D-pad. Then you have Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz for the Wii, yet again another launch title on a Nintendo system. It's quite good. Although using those brand new fangled motion controls can be quite tricky to get used to. Plus, flick the controller up and for the first time in the series your ball bounces. The biggest change however is that in this storyline we get boss battles. All of which play out pretty much exactly how you'd imagine a typical 3D platformer to work. Find the pattern and repeat. Is it a good thing? I don't really think so. It's more frustrating than anything else, but I suppose they had to do something new with the series, which unfortunately brings me to easily the biggest change up in this series. Super Monkey Ball Adventure, released on the PlayStation 2, GameCube and PSP. This is a weird one. Take the linear time trial style of the original game and turn it into a more open worldly platformer game. Actually on paper I suppose that doesn't sound too bad, unfortunately it really wasn't the way to go for the series in my opinion. The problem is you need to constantly hold back on your controls in the platform style part of the game. If you pick up speed you end up falling off a ledge which is exactly what you expect in a puzzle game not a 3D platformer. Also 3D platforming 101 is being able to jump, <laughs> good luck. If you want to do something as simple as getting onto a particular ledge, it involves you bouncing on flowers, fighting the camera angle 9 times out of 10, just not making it. It's pissing annoying. Take AA out of the ball and it would have worked. However play it like it is and it's just pure frustration. Sadly, 
the very worst game on this entire list. Several ports followed, including Monkey Ball 1 and 2 for iOS, and Super Monkey Ball 2 Sakura Edition for iPad, Android and Windows phones. Yet again more of the same, and considering it's on a different device, these are absolutely fine for what they are. The formula got changed up again with Super Monkey Ball Tip and Tilt 1 and 2, two Java based games where you start at the top, fall down and collect what you can on the way. Sort of like that Miitomo game that everyone seems to be enjoying at the moment. In my opinion, it's very, very average. So after the world started calming down from everything being motion controlled, they became obsessed with this thing, We Fit. And I suppose actually this really isn't too far fetched of an idea for Monkey Ball. Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll. You stand on the Wii Fit board and control the tilting of the world around you. Thankfully you can just use the normal Wiimote to play if you prefer. And well, it's really just more of this game. And if you ask me, that's not too bad of a thing. 21 mini games feature in this one. And it's pretty much just more Monkey Ball. As is Super Monkey Ball 3D. For, you guessed it, the 3DS. Just like the Nintendo DS version, you can control this with or without your stylus. But ooh, get this, it's in 3D. Yet again, more of the same game, but again for a different system. That very same year, in 2011, arcade goers got another go at Super Monkey Ball, with Super Monkey Ball Ticket Blitz. This time you use a rolling ball to control the Monkey Ball. A pretty obvious step forward for the series if you ask me. Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits, not to be confused with Banana Blitz, is the series' first entry onto the Vita. Man, the Monkey Ball series sure did get about. So what does this version bring to the table? A level editor. Yep, a level editor finally made its way into Monkey Ball. Isn't that crazy? It wasn't until this, the series' 10th release, that we got a level editor. Here you can challenge your friends to custom courses. This version of the game, although getting average scores, in my opinion, is the best portable version of the game. The motion controls are also here if you really want to use that gyroscope on the Vita, but thankfully you do also have the normal controls too. And that is it for Super Monkey Ball on proper consoles as the last entry in the series was found back on the mobile with Super Monkey Ball Bounce. Yep, it's a free to play mobile phone version of Peggle. Yet again, it's as good as you want it to be. It's Peggle, nothing more, actually a little bit less. Just play Peggle. Wow. That was quite extensive, and other than the odd appearance in other Sega games such as Sega Superstars like I previously mentioned, and Sonic Riders, Sega Superstars Tennis, Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing, and of course Sonic and All-Star Racing Transformed, Monkey Ball is thankfully one Sega franchise that is here to stay. Never getting more than a couple of main releases per console, I always look forward to a new Monkey Ball experience. It seems to be the one franchise that Sega love to use to test out whatever the latest gimmick is on a new console. And what's probably best about this is that at least in my books, it's fully welcome. Because, well, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to be finding a quality Monkey Ball game on whatever console you choose. Uh, actually, apart from the current generation. So here's to AA, Baby, Mimi and Gongon, Gon, and the incredible Monkey Ball franchise so far. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out my complete history on the Monkey Ball franchise. Firstly I want to say a massive thanks to Top Hat Gaming Man. If you want to check out his review on Marble Madness, click the link that you see right up in the middle of the screen. And either side of that I've got a couple of videos of my own that I think you may like. The top 10 Sega IPs that never got sequels. Sega loves Monkey Ball, but they've forgotten about all of these great, great games. And then of course you got Earthworm Jim The Complete Story. 
If you haven't subscribed already, click that lovely subscribe button. Come and check me out on Patreon by clicking on the big P-shape and come and find me on social media by searching for Slopes Game Room. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it, whatever you prefer. But for now, that is it from me. This is DJ Slopes signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time.